Hey, I'm Ben from Digital Mastery and Masters Academy. And here I wanna show you how I took a simple feature in Lightroom and kinda of amped it up a bit to give a whole new layer of organization to my catalog. And this will work for working with images, folders, and collections. And the feature that's overly simple is called labels, but that sounds just not useful. Well, it's when you assign meaning to your labels, which is the feature I wanna show you, and then be able to filter or narrow down the images you're looking on based on those meanings. So let me show you how I use this, then I'll show you how to implement it as well. So here I'm in my Lightroom catalog file. On the left side of my screen, I use collections for organizing things. And collection is like a playlist with music. It just means that you can create one of these, drag images into them, and it remembers where they are, even though they might reside in multiple folders. I'm assuming you've used collections before. If you haven't, you might wanna watch another video first. But here with collections, check this out. Up here is an area called filter collections. And most people use that to just click there and then type in the name of a collection that they know to exist. So I know I have one called YouTube. So I'm going to type in UT and it gives me my YouTube possibilities. Those are images I'm thinking about using in future YouTube videos. And down here, my YouTube archive, which is uh, the images I've already used. Okay, big deal. You can do that to find any particular collection. But here's where it comes to be a little bit interesting. This magnifying glass on the left, if you click on it, there's a choice here called color labels. And do you see how my color labels are not named red, blue, yellow, those kinds of things. Instead, they actually have meaning. So if I was asked to teach something and I needed to do it right away, I would choose talks and suddenly right here, I would see all these subject matters that I could speak about in a moment's notice. Then I could come in here and click on a particular uh, one of these and be able to start teaching because I've organized these collections based on that subject matter of teaching. But I was able to narrow down what I saw on my collection list very quickly because I clicked on this little magnifying glass and I chose color labels and I've assigned it talks. I have other ones in here. Here's ready for public display. And here's where I have various portfolios where if I want to be able to very quickly show you some yoga pictures, I take pictures of my wife doing yoga, uh, then I can get to them very quickly. Or if I want to show you images from Africa, let's go on safari or let's go to Morocco. And I know that these images have all been narrowed down to only images that are ready for public display. Otherwise, I would not have assigned the color label that I did which has a name of ready for public display. I also have a choice called utility in here, and that's gonna get me to all my collections that are just utilitarian collections. Like, can I find all the images that I've edited in the last seven days or 14 days or so on? And where the images I've captured? You see with COVID, I'm not capturing quite as many uh, these days, uh, but, I can very quickly get to these kinds of collections without having to sort and pack by opening and closing uh, the various um, collection sets that are there. Uh, other things that I have in here is work me. And this is where if I feel like working on an image, this is where I organize all the pictures that actually need some work. So if I felt like working on my series of uh, yoga poses, with my wife, here are ones that all need to be processed. And here's ones that says with SP, that means smart preview. Those are images I could work on even when I'm traveling and don't have the hard drive that contains my original picture. But I had to set these up. The main thing that's allowing me to get to them quickly are these little guys, which are color labels. Most people are used to using them only as if they're colors, but now you can actually assign meaning to them. So let me show you how can you assign these and uh, how do you define them. So if I right click on any collection, there is a choice in here of add color labeled collection. And in here, by default, you're gonna find the name of colors. And I don't find those to be as useful because I can't remember what red or yellow or blue means. So let's define what the various colors mean. To do so, you wanna to go to the metadata menu in Lightroom. And that's where you're gonna find a choice called color label set. And you wanna come down here and choose edit. That's where you can define what color labels mean when applied to images, folders, or collections. And so here you can see where I've done it for collections.
Now, the one thing I'd suggest you do that I have not is to include the name of the actual color first because these particular colors do not show up when you are applying a label to anything. So you could go over here and just put the word red at the beginning and then maybe a dash for talks or space or maybe a colon. Uh, and then here I put in yellow at the beginning and that's going to make it a little bit more friendly when you want to know what the various colors mean because you'll be able to see them more uh, accurately there. Now you can do the same thing for folders and I've done so here and that means if I right click on any folder in my folder list and tell it to add a color label then instead of seeing a list of the names of colors I see this list. Let's go over what exactly this means. Uh, well when I finish a shoot, I, I've just captured it. I've imported it in Lightroom. The first thing I really need to do is cull that shoot, which means narrow it down to only those images that are worth working on. And if I haven't done that yet, then I sign it to culling needed. If I've gotten at least half the images that were in a particular folder culled where they're no longer in that folder really, I have a subfolder system I use for that, uh, then I go over here to additional culling needed. That means I've done some culling, but I'm not quite done narrowing it down to just the images that need to be processed. Then I have a choice down here called culled. And that means that every image in here are images that need to be processed. I don't need to evaluate them to determine if they're worth processing or not. They just need processing. Finally, there's a choice called finished and that's when every single image in a shoot that I've done has been processed and is done. There's no work left to be done in there. I also have a choice called not in system and that's when I have a folder of images that just never needs to be finished. Like I took pictures for insurance purposes and it's pictures of my house that if my house burns down, I'm going to give them to the insurance agent. Well, I'm not going to cull those and finish them and so on. So I have not in system. You can do the same thing with images. And so here with images, you'll see what my colors are. And this is, I use subfolders to determine the status of an image. And when I determine that an image is out of focus or just not worth processing, I put it in a subfolder called outtakes. But when I'm traveling and I don't have my original images with me, I can't do that. So here I use a color label. I also have my wife Karen do retouching for me and so when I give her an image to retouch I put it on a yellow label and therefore I know not to work on that image because someone else is working on it. I need to wait until it comes back from them then I would take away that color label. Uh, and then here's active progress which just means I started working on an image and I had to go away from it before I finished. Well that's where if I want to work on some pictures and I narrow it down to active progress images I can uh, easily uh, find those images quickly. Representative of a group means I might end up putting an image in a collection or somewhere else and it just represents a whole series of images but I didn't want to clutter up that um, collection with an image that you know maybe a dozen images so I just put one in there and put this color label on. Anytime I see that color label it means go and look at the folder that this image is in because there's other ones very similar to it. So that's how I've set mine up. The only thing I'd suggest for you is to put the names of the colors at the beginning which I did not. Once you've done that, go to this menu at the top where it says preset, click on it and say you want to save the current settings as a new preset and therefore if you ever change these again you can easily get back to this one because it will be found in this menu uh, and therefore you can get back to them. I'm going to click cancel because mine are already set up the way I'd like them to. Now if you want to apply a label to a particular image just right click on that image. Uh, if you have a single button mouse because you're on a Mac that means control click and right here it says set color label and there you will see all those names that you have defined. The same thing is true if you come over here to your folder list. If I come over here and look there you'll see color labels on all of my folders. If I right click on one I can add a color label and here I can change it to whatever it is uh, I need. And with this color labeling, let's see how that helps me out. Well, if I come up here to the top of my folder list, 
I can click on that little magnifying glass and choose color labels. And if what I feel like doing right now is processing pictures and not sorting through them to figure out which ones need to be processed, I'm gonna come over here and choose the choice of cold. That means all of these shoots here are ones where I've narrowed it down so the only images that are still in these folders are ones that need processing and I don't need to evaluate them. They're all good images. Then if instead I feel like culling, I can go to culling needed. And these are ones where I really haven't started to uh, narrow down the images to only those that are worth uh, working on. Or I can say additional culling needed if I wanna work with folders that have had some culling done but aren't quite done yet. And I got a bunch of that stuff from my archives. And then not in system is where I would find things like insurance uh, shoots or really, really old photos before uh, I've implemented this system. And then when I'm done, I always go back to the magnifying glass and choose all. So then my folder list is back to normal. And so we can do that for folders, for collections, and for images. When it comes to images, if you wanna narrow things down, one thing that I do is I come up here to the choice called metadata. And then up here, I can set this to label. And then it will give me uh, a list of any labels that were applied to this particular folder. But right now, what we're looking at is only 190 images, and it only has one label of evaluate, which actually has none. So there you have it. This is how I've added another level of organization to my Lightroom catalog. And I find it makes it much faster to be able to find the images when I really wanna dive in and do work quickly, or I need to do a presentation and I don't wanna sit there and fumble through all my folders and my collections. So define what your color labels mean and then filter for those meanings to be able to find your images. I'm Ben Wilmore and I'll see you next time.